What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. Just a quick uh, announcements here at the beginning before we run the video. Um, the first thing is I'm very tired in the video. That's first. Second of all, um, I want to remind my viewers to, whenever possible, always watch my videos in full screen. Um, the two reasons for that is that if you have it in full screen then you can't be distracted by anything on the right um, and I do want to hold your undivided attention in any video that I produce so I'm asking you to put it in full screen I'm also way cuter in full screen can I just tell you that um, and I also want to let you know that this video was a lot longer than it ended up being but I got real passionate, I start drifting off into religion, and it, just the intro was like some ungodly number, you know, which I'm fine with, but I just decided I wanted to stay on message with this video, and that's the only reason why I edited that stuff out. But my next video will be um, a religious piece. Um, trying to wake my people up with regard to that um, as you know a lot of my information got lost when my other channel got shut down so a lot of that information I need, to re I need to reproduce so that it's out there and available for my people so they at least have the opportunity to wake up so that's what my next video will be also this is going to be the third and final piece of the how to get what you want uh, in this society um, just because uh, as you will see with this this covering this tax stuff it's very voluminous um, and I just don't think I need to do any more of that I could have done more with this but you'll hear what I'm communicating to you in the video um, I do touch on some uh, on some of the housing stuff so I don't need to do that again I think I pretty much tie that up um, I know somebody um, asked about student loans um, that may be something I just touch on in another video you know but I think that this is gonna close out the series for now at least you know at the very least it just close it out for now um, I do thank everybody that has watched all three parts now um, so I don't want to make this long this uh, this little announcement piece at the beginning I just want to keep it short and I'll see you in my next video um, I just wanted to um, give you just share some things with you you know all right I'll see you soon What's up everybody? This is the Jedi. The whole idea of income tax, everybody, is a lie. There is no law, hear this, there is no law that says you have to pay income tax. How I ended up mentioning this is because how it relates to credit because what you must understand is the big picture the big picture probably only in the last 10 years 15 years maybe I think it's probably like 10 but I'm, I'm willing to allow 15 you suddenly have the commercialization of credit what do I mean by that where there, there's commercial on TV about your credit score your credit score your credit score that wasn't always around Suddenly it's been commercialized. But something else has been happening, par happening parallel to that. And that is go paperless. Go paperless. You see, there are two heads of the same snake. Because you have to understand something about the Federal Reserve that owns the country. You understand? The Federal Reserve Act 
was signed on Christmas night while Congress was out on fucking vacation and all of it that allowed the Federal Reserve to be in place. This is 1913. Wilson is the fucking president. But that's also when you had the 16th Amendment. You see? Which was never ratified by the states. So you're not supposed to pay no fucking income tax. But how do they relate to this common day? This paperless and this credit score bullshit. Because you are working. And by the way, none of your taxes go for shit. They don't. You think we pay our taxes and so we get something you don't get shit. It's to pay the families that will never ever see work ever. You see what I'm saying? Your war bugs, your Rothschilds, your, you know, people like that. Rockefellers and shit. It's owned by banks, private banks. They got one here. There's branches of it, but the main motherfucker is in New York. The fucking UK has one. You see what I'm saying? It's a cabal of private banks that own shit. But how does this relate to you? And why you don't need, because you don't know enough. So when you want to get an attitude about not getting credit, it's because you're ignorant. You're ignorant. Now, hear this. So therefore, there is a, so you're working as a slave. Cause not, you don't just have income tax. Every time you go buy a Snickers tax, you get your fucking car registration tax. You fucking own a house, property tax. Fucking tax, fucking tax, tax, tax your ass out the fucking window. Your phone bill, your gas bill, your light bill, anything's got a fucking tax on it. You see what I'm saying? That's why I say anytime you get a free fucking coin to this bitch, you get it. And I'm not even mad at people that rob banks. I'm not mad at the ass at all. If they can get away, my hat is off to you, bruh. Shit. But what happens is you're working as a slave. And they get, uh, I think the total, and you're going to see a video. I'm going to show you this sister, Sherry, Sherry Peel Jackson. Appreciate my sister that was on the case that, that told me her name, I, Lemon something. I don't remember your name. Because I mentioned her in the video. I know who she is, but I just didn't, couldn't think of her name. Anyways, she's going to tell you like the, how many dollars they make per minute or some bullshit. Like, it's outrageous. All right. So, they're making that. Now, it's always better if they can get you, because that's money that's, that's just coming to them. I already explained to you what credit is. It's money out of thin air. Go watch part two. It's money out of thin air, or part one. Or was it part two? I don't remember. God damn it, watch one and two, I'm over it. All right. And the links for those are in the, in the description box down below. So now imagine you add a third tier to that where now everybody is on just paperless debit cards, credit cards. You see, cause there is no money at Fort Knox, everybody. We've been off the gold standard. The gold standard means you have something that backs up the, your nation's currency. We don't have that. That's been replaced by armies and nuclear bombs and shit. You see, when you don't do, we tell, when, if you don't do business with us, we just threaten you. We tell, we tell people you're a terrorist and you're a bad person and that you, you hate women and that you murder your citizens. You're poisoning your own family and all the bullshit. And they come in and just attack you and take your shit because the white man is the devil. And the only way that he's ever gotten anything around this fucking earth is by murder and theft. That's it. Period. That is the legacy of white people. Murder and theft. That's it. That's it. That's it. If they white, that's their legacy. And 400 fucking years of free labor from us that built this entire bitch. It wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even have the, the capability to be this powerful. That's the only reason why it's that powerful. You get 400 free years of anything, you're going to be sitting pretty, pretty, pretty good. I let you come stay with me. I go, you don't got to pay rent. Or you tell me you're not paying rent, whichever way. I go, you don't got to pay rent. And I'm paying all the shit. I'm paying the rent. I'm paying the lights, I'm paying the gas, I'm paying the water, I'm paying all the shit. And all of a sudden, 
you stay with me for five years and then in five years you come to me and I go, I go you know I'm just really broke like you know could you just owe me 20 bucks you're like you don't got no money what are you doing with all your money you should pull yourself up by your boot chaps bitch you've been in my house for five years and you ain't paid a fucking thing you see what I'm saying but as ridiculous as that sounds that's what comes out of the mouth of this white devil like the past never happened everything's just appeared right now it's all about right now like there's no pathology, nothing happened, you see? But then when they ask get cancer or melanoma, the first thing they say, how come we couldn't catch it sooner? Oh no, no, we're not concerned about right now. We're just concerned about right now. Forget forget that whole developmental stage, you're a melanoma bitch. You only have five days to live, but forget that whole past shit. That, that means nothing, That that's nothing. It's about right now, it's about right now. You have melanoma right now, you're gonna die in five days. So, you know, bon appetit and shit, you see? But that's essentially what, has been told and that's the attitude towards our people you see so you have to understand the benefit of them trying to get you to be in love with credit think about it you you're going to defend just owning some shit and you don't have the money to buy it think about that and know this you can't you know, take it with if you you want to own a house someplace where there's no tax fine Go and save you some money and buy you a house. You see? But you double jeopardy in this country because you're going to buy a house on credit. So you're just trying to hope that your affairs are in order enough that they can get mass. Give me some money. I can own a house that I don't have the money for. So now you're paying plus the interest. You see? God is not against loans. <laughs> He's against usury. You see, and with credit comes interest and tax. That's why God has forbidden it. You see, so it is forbidden for everybody. Just because you don't know it does not change the rule, period. Remember I told you even in their law, man's law, <clears throat> in this bitch, even so the law is not a defense, says the devil. So if the God is the same way. You see what I'm saying? It, 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 well, if you don't know something, God will forgive you, but the, but his word doesn't change. And what you need to understand about listening to any video that I put out, once you've heard me, you now have the responsibility with God. Because he knows what you've heard and he knows what you know and don't know. So you need to be very careful about listening to me as it relates to your spiritual relationship with the Creator. Because once I've spoken it, it's on you now. It's on you. You know better. You know better. You know better. Therefore, you can be held accountable for it. That's real, everybody. That's real. You need to know that. That's real. So, that's why you don't want credit. Because you're just feeding into the day that there will be no money. No need for no money at all, period. And they just have everybody on this credit and, no, and paperless, non-money, monetary system, credit cards and the chip and all that stuff, you know what I mean? They even got, they already have it on the fucking debit cards. You, you could swipe the bitch forever. Now all of a sudden, chip. It's gotta be something to that because what's that reading that the swipe couldn't read? That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. So I go cash only bitches. You understand? Which I never was one of these people to use my debit card anyway. I can balance my money better if I just, if I, once I run out of cash, I know I'm out of cash, period. You feel me? So I use fucking cash, period, at the end. That's it. Only thing they're going to be able to follow on my damn chip is I was at the bank. That's it. They don't know where the fuck else I spent my money. They don't need to. You see? But you're playing into that because you're only concerned about your own pettiness. And what is a house going to get you? What does that do? You see, what does that do? If you can't own the land, then you still run. You, it's not really a good heirloom because you're passing down. You're passing debt down to your kids because they're going to end up having to pay the taxes and all that kind of bullshit. If you croak too soon, they could lose the house. You see, so you just getting into an area. You just you just getting into something that's just a vicious cycle. I could say if it was a if this was a land where you could buy stuff and own it and they don't charge you for the land because you can't own God's land, then fine. 
that's the main reason why I never bought a house. Because I'm like, if I buy it, I don't ever really own. To me, owning is I don't owe a fucking dime, period. I own my Honda. If I don't drive the bitch, I, I, then I don't need to put gas in it. Done. I own it. There's no reoccurring charge and shit. You see? So, if you have a house, you got to pay the taxes on it. Plus, you got to be paying for anything that goes wrong with it. If you rent, so something breaks. I don't need y'all to fix such and such. Done. Done. You see? So, just for that reason, without getting too deep, you should think about that, you know? Um, people say, well, for tax reasons, you see, but there you go with the tax. For tax reasons, it's better to own a house. Well, they've been raping your ass all damn they they raping you all year from your income because I already told you if somebody getting part of your money that wasn't on your job somebody you don't ever even you ain't you ain't never met and ain't gonna ever see and they getting your money why am I burping so much they taking your money so now you just giving them more money and more control because they want to attach everything to the house. Attach everything to the house. Attach everything to the house. People think they hit the Holy Grail when they get a house. And you do not. You do not. You do not. You do not. They just have more control over your ass now. You know? And if you're an African person, you definitely gonna end up paying more for that house no matter where it is or what it look like than that white counterpart. Period. You see? And just it's just vicious. It's just vicious. It's just vicious. It's just vicious. You know, you can still have a house without the bells, with, without that. You know what I'm saying? Rent you a fucking house if you that pressed to be in a house. Rent you a damn house. You know what I'm saying? Get the right contract on that and just rent it. You feel me? Just rent you a house. You don't need to own a damn house. You know? Unless you can own the land. And if you can own the land, then you build you a damn house. You see? Then you don't need nobody to loan you shit. But you want everything the quick way. Just like you think you're going to just die and Christ died for my sins and I'm definitely going to heaven and you are not. God is going to be questioning you and you're going to, you're going to be responsible for everything you did in this damn life. I don't give a fuck what the white devil has told you. I'm telling you the truth. And you need to prepare. So just like you think you get a quick microwave into paradise, you're trying to get a quick house. You see what I'm saying? If you're really serious about it, you go and find a piece of land and buy the land. Buy it. You see what I'm saying? In a part of the country where you're not going to be having to pay no more, where you can just own it outright. And then you build you a house. Build you a house. But just buying a house? Nah. Nah. No, I'm telling you, it's just vicious. You don't understand the, the, the white man is the devil and money is their God. Oof. Anyways, this has gotten long and I said I was going to show you these videos. I want to say this before I show you the videos. You need to understand that there are people out there that are not paying income tax. They're not. They've, they've woke up to the fact that this is some bullshit. And that there is no law that anybody can show them that they have to pay taxes. And many of them have beat the case when it's gone to court. I already told you that the IRS does not have arrest powers. That's why they bring the ATF and other people with them when they come to seize your shit. It's bullying at the highest degree. But they will show you and make viral the video of the little racist boy being bullied. And we're all supposed to feel bad. But you're being bullied every fucking day by this white devil. Stealing your money. It's the height of bullying. So let's... I, uh, I'm going to just run these back to back. I got two... I got, I think, four videos that I'm going to show you. 
the first one, I'm, the first two, I'm just going to run them back to back. Um, I may do something in between just so you can differentiate. But the first one is, um, these first two are Sherry Peel Jackson. She used to work for the IRS. And she, she came to her senses. And now she goes around the country telling people what's up. All right, she even did a little time in jail because obviously the white man, but I want you to hear something that she says, and this is something I preach to you until I'm blue in the face. I, when, especially when we was dealing with police shootings and all the bullshit, I told you, it doesn't matter what the fuck you do. We're not about peace and all that bullshit. If you're not threatening this white devil's life or his money, you're not doing a fucking thing. And she says in this video about the money part of it. So, let's roll those, and I'll see you back on the other side. Let's go. Sherry Peel Jackson. She is an ex-IRS agent, uh, CPA, fraud examiner. She was working for the IRS. She was on the fast track to success there. She was doing very well, had received numerous awards for all of the work she did. And she realized that there is no law and that the biggest fraud was the IRS. I tried to be the best at whatever I did. So when I got to the IRS, I hit the ground running. My first year in 1988, I got a fraud award. It's a big shaped in Georgia award for fraud. But I got numerous awards, and my biggest one is from the IRS commissioner himself. Back in uh, 1995, it was Fred T. Goldberg. One of the things that I wanted to tip you off on as far as what the IRS does before I get into the story, they have... Well, they had, I don't know what they're doing now, but they had what's called a Market Segment Specialization Program, or MSSP. They would take different market segments, like ministers, and try to figure out how much money you were underreporting. Let's take beauticians, for example. I'm going to audit her beauty shop. She owns the shop, and she has some people working there. Based on the assumption that the IRS has that people don't report all of their money, but they like to put all their expenses on there, so granted, all her expenses are on the tax return, and I figure out how many bottles of this and that she bought. I can calculate a dollar figure. So I'll tell Sophia, after it's all over and we're buddy-buddy, I, I just shock her. And I say, well, guess what? Uh, it looks like, based on my calculations, that you really bought in $80,000, but you have 50 on the tax return. So here, you have to owe the, you owe the IRS back $30,000. What would she do? She would, she, would she would sign off on it. I only had two cases in seven and a half years where, where somebody actually bucked at me. People are so afraid. The, the government and the media have gotten you guys so afraid of the IRS that you don't even buck them. Now, mind you, she might have left some money off. Maybe there was several times where she just didn't report the cash. And maybe that's why. Maybe she, didn't have, she has no idea how much she quote-unquote underreported. Maybe that was it. But they always acquiesce. They got one, anybody own a laundromat, they have one that will calculate based on your water bill. How many loads are washed at your laundromat? And the point to all of this is, this is what they do to people, and people just acquiesce to it. When I quit the IRS in 1995, and after maybe a year of being Jim Cleaver and realizing that that was just not me, I hung my shingle, which, which in accounting terms or business terms is you, you start your own business. Now, you know that picture of Uncle Sam, the one that says Uncle Sam wants you? I used that same picture, and I, and I had it really big, and I said, Uncle Sam wants your money, but I'm a former IRS agent. I'm going to show you how to get it back. You know, the people came running. And then these people start coming to me saying, <clears throat> uh, I keep hearing that uh, we're not supposed to pay tax, or I keep hearing that the tax law is a fraud. And like I said, I was raised differently. I never would look at that person and say, you're a cuckoo. I wouldn't even think it. It was like, okay, you know, in, in this back burner back here, I would think to myself, Okay, there's some people out there that actually think that the income tax doesn't apply to us or it's a fraud or it's being misapplied. But I didn't do anything about it because, remember, I'm rolling around with my little businesses and whatnot. So one night in, uh, maybe in early June, one of my pastor clients called. It was night. It was about 9 o'clock at night. And she said, you know what? I think it was maybe a Wednesday night after her Wednesday night service. She said, uh, I've got this par parishioner that just keeps bugging me about this income tax. She's talking about that we're not liable for the income tax and she wants to talk to you. Can I give this lady your telephone number? And I said, uh, okay. So maybe about 10 minutes later, this lady called me. She said, uh, I have a question for you. Are we supposed to pay income tax or not? And I said, okay. 
do you want the cuff answer or do you want the real answer? She said, I want the real answer. I said, well, I really don't know. You know, even though I'm a former IRS agent, I haven't done the research, but I hear that there's a credible body of evidence out there that says that we don't owe the income tax. I was okay. I mean, I took the information. I was sitting there listening like, okay, okay, okay. And, you know, I said, okay, this lady had a lot of information. I don't know where she got it from. So a few weeks later, she called me again, and she said, Miss Jackson, Miss Jackson, remember that information I told you on the phone? It's in the USA Today. Pull it up on the Internet. Okay, so I got the USA Today. It was July 7th, 2000. And it says, Dear We the People, Most citizens are not required to file an income tax return. The 16th Amendment to the Constitution is a fraud, and if you file, you waive your Fifth Amendment right. I said, okay, that's some of the stuff she was saying. Now, this is a lot of reading. But I kept reading because I was very interested, you know, being a CPA and into fraud and all that. I wanted to see what was going on. So here in the third column, it says no one has been able to collect the $50,000 reward offered by Bill Conklin to anyone that can identify the section of the Internal Revenue Code that makes a typical worker liable for the income tax. I'm serious about winning is $50,000. Okay, so it's at my desk. Basically, I just shoved everything off my desk and got the codes out, the regulations out, the tax guide. I got on the internet to look at the Cornell University site, all these different things, and I started researching. And two weeks later, I said to myself, oh my goodness, we have a problem here. It doesn't look like I'm going to win this money. <laughs> and I was sitting there at my desk thinking, this, is, this thing is a fraud. Two weeks it took me to sit there and, and, and realize that. I didn't just look at the positive, I looked at the negative, I looked at the IRS site. All these things are going on, this thing is a fraud. Being, being a CPA and a former IRS agent, I sat there at the desk, you know, I was by myself, and all these thoughts started going through my head. The first thought was, now I finally open up the codes and regulations. Because see, at the IRS, they trained us with these little guides. We didn't use the codes and regulations. We would get one of these, and you would have to read it, understand it, and pass this little test. And all these little guys that I got, I read them, and I, I made A's on all my tests. And I thought, and I guess the rest of the agents in training thought that the information that was in here was the same that was in those thick codes and regulations. But it's not necessarily the same. The things that are in these training manuals are not necessarily the same things in the codes and regulations. I learned that in my studying. And the time that I was doing the research, I also learned about the pocket commission. Now, I'm going to let this go around the room, but y'all got to give it back. This is the outside that I purchased of the pocket commission that I had. And before I left, I had the sense of mind to make a copy. This is the little badge I used to flip out at people and say, give me your books and records. Give me your bank statements. Give me all your credit cards, you know. And, you know, people, okay, here, you know, even the counties. I go to the county, do it. I go just about anywhere and flip this little thing out and get whatever I want, you know. There's a lot of power nuts out there doing that, guys. Y'all know it. Half of you already know about it. There's an enforcement pocket commission, and there's a non-enforcement pocket commission. And I started looking back at this thing. It has SER, Southeast Region. First of all, I'll read it. It has my picture up here, and it says, uh, Sherry Jackson, whose signature and picture appear above, is duly commissioned as internal revenue agent and has authority to perform all duties conferred upon such officers under all laws and regulations administered by the Internal Revenue Service, including the authority to investigate and require and receive information as to all matters relating to such laws and regulations. And it has SER and some other numbers and an A. And based on this Internal Ma Revenue Manual, A means administrative. So I'm an administrative clerk out there on the front lines. And I'm an administrative clerk with a non-enforcement pocket commission. Okay, so I'm starting to get angry here. Starting to think about all that. I had to take bribes and get little tape recorders taped to my body and, and the little microphones on me and go in and take bribes from people. But, you know, thinking about stuff like that, you know, what, they got me out here and I'm thinking I really have authority. And this is administrative, administrative, non-enforcement pocket commission. That was one of the other things I thought about. And then I thought about, and I found out, this is, this is one of the, another issue, a levy versus a notice of levy. This is something that I didn't deal with a lot because I was an agent, and I just assessed the tax. I, didn't, I wasn't a tax collector. I just assessed it. So this is a notice of levy. And someone said, hey, this is a notice of levy. This is what the banks get or your, your job or whatever. They said, look at the back of it. So I'm looking at the back of this notice of levy, and it says, section 6331, levy and distraint. And then it says, B. And C. And I'm thinking, it starts off with B? What happened to A? 
So I looked up A, and here's A. And it says, levy may be made upon the accrued salary or wages of any officer, employee, or elected official of the United States, the District of Columbia, or any agency or instrumentality of the United States or the District of Columbia by serving a notice of levy. I'm thinking, but that's not most people. That's not the person that works at AT&T or Bell South or Coca-Cola. That's not most people. Aren't people noticing that the A isn't on here? Aren't they, aren't they curious about it? Why are they doing this? All this is going through my head during this period of time that I'm realizing that there's, there's a rat in the camp. That's what I call it. But this is the, the straw that broke the camel's back. The Federal Reserve is not federal. How many of you did not know before today that the Federal Reserve isn't federal? If you didn't, don't be shy. If you didn't know before today that the Federal Reserve isn't federal, raise your hand. Most people don't know that. Nine out of ten people that I asked off the street don't understand that the Federal Reserve is a non-auditable private banking cartel. They are collecting $36 million an hour in interest from the American people. $36 million an hour in interest from the American people. My children, my two children, were born $86,000 in debt based on the national debt. Now, why am I going to take away from those children to give to somebody that is going to be born in 2030? That's not going to happen. So that was my decision. It was very easy. You know, you think about stuff like fear. Oh, the IRS is going to get you. They're going to take your stuff. It, that's not important to me. Stuff's not important to me. My children are important to me. I'm one of those mothers that will roll up her sleeves with one leg and try to whoop you if you mess with my children. And I think that a lot of mothers are like that. So this is what my decision was. And I went on and started educating people. One of the things that people ask me once I've made this decision and started talking about it, how are we going to run the country without the income tax? I don't know how much Dan got into it, but the Grace Commission report that Ronald Reagan put out in 1994, 84, sorry, says that none of the money collected in income tax goes towards running the country. But the bottom line is it's not going towards running the country, so you patriotic people out there, you've been fooled. Beardsley Rummel, he was Federal Reserve Chairman back in 1946, did a speech before the American Bar Association. The title of his speech was, Taxes for Revenue are Obsolete. Within the body of this report, he says that the taxes, the income taxes for redistribution of wealth. What is redistribution of wealth? What is that? That's taking from me that I've worked hard for and given it from somebody else to somebody else. Shouldn't I have the right to redistribute my wealth if I want to? Another question that they ask me is, how come I haven't heard this on TV, <laughs> or on the radio, or in the newspaper? Well, sweetie, the simple answer to that is, the same people who own the television stations and the newspapers and the radio stations are the same people who are involved with the Federal Reserve. And here is a little statement that says that it only requires 5% ownership to significantly influence the media. Rockefeller is one of the original shareholders of the Federal Reserve. Uh, as early as 1963, the House Banking Subcommittee reported that Rockefeller, through Chase Manhattan Bank, controlled 5.9 percent of the stock in CBS and the bank and gained interlocking directorates with ABC. I went all the way through high school, all the way through college, all the way through testing for the CPA and all this Irish training and didn't hear about any of this. You think they want this information out here for you guys to eat up and chew up and find out what's really going on? I don't think so. Now. Another one. Why, why don't we just tell our elected officials about this? <sighs> and to make a really long story short, the We the People Foundation, the same people that put out this ad, put together a hearing. And these 40 researchers were going to ask the IRS and the DOJ these questions, and we're going to have this big meeting in Washington called the Truth and Taxation Hearings. Okay? So we got together with 537 questions. So we sent them the 537 questions so they could research and have the answers, and what did they do? They reneged on coming. They signed off on it, but they reneged on coming. So you all didn't get to hear the truth. We went on and had the hearings anyway, put it on CD, marched around Washington, giving it to all 535 congressmen and senators. Please look at this information. We got stupid responses back like, thank you for visiting our offices in Washington. The next time you come from Washington, come to Washington, please visit us again. They don't care. Your presidents don't care. Another one that they ask me, or they'll say something like, well, this just sounds like it's some kind of conspiracy theory. Y'all hear that a lot? Okay. 
But tell me this, what's the difference between a conspiracy and a strategy? Don't you understand that this is all by design? All this black, white stuff. You're white, I'm black, you know. You're Democrat, I'm a Republican. You know, y'all heard of divide and conquer before, right? Yeah. Why y'all letting, letting them do it to us? While I'm sitting up here arguing with this man about what his great, great, great granddaddy did to mine, there's this big old fence closing in around us. And while I'm sitting here wasting time and he's sitting here telling me why he doesn't know, we need to put our heads together and figure out how to get out of this fence that these people are building around us. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. That's where we got to be. <laughs> Divide and conquer, we can't let that work anymore. It's been working all these years. Then we need to get together and understand. First of all, you need to understand what is going on with your money. You work hard. It's like we're on a hamster. We are a hamster on a wheel. This country started out with taxation without representation. Where are we now? How, why did we get back to where we started? We got lazy and comfortable. Get out of your comfort zone. I never tell people to file a tax return. I never tell them not to file. I never tell people to pay taxes, and I never pay, tell them not to pay. What I tell people is to do your own research, do your due diligence, and decide whether or not you're going to be a slave or get off the plantation. That's your choice. So in essence, you're wasting time. As long as you continue to feed the monster, the monster's going to grow. They're going to always have, they're going to laugh in your face. And any kind of cause that you have, anything that you're trying to do in your life concerning getting things back on track with our country the way it's supposed to be, you're going to get laughed at because you continue to give them the money to do whatever it is they're doing to us. A lot of people don't care. A lot of people get the money taken out of their checks and they actually think they're getting, oh, I get back $3,000 every year. They don't take anything from me. I say, sweetie, look at your W-2. They took 14000 They gave you back 3000 of your own money. Oh. <laughs> but the point is, if each of us understands where we are, who we are, and tries to do something about it, then we're going to get somewhere. This is a great country, but it's off track. And who's going to get it back on track? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Um... That first part, or that last part was, that was for white people in the audience. You know, I'm a very good listener. All praise is due to Allah. It's one of my gifts. I love me for that. It's one of the main, I love myself, but I, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the things on the very long list of why I really like me. <laughs> is some of the gifts that I've been given. And I'm just glad that I'm, I wasn't born a different human being, you know, it's a lot of brothers out there that are just lost and all that kind of stuff and anyway. So that last part was for white folks. <laughs> you know, and it also was understandable. I just point this out. This is random. It's not really random, but it's kind of random because it's about we don't really, we don't ever, I don't hear that in black gatherings. You know, if there's a if black audience, black speaker, I don't care what it is about. We don't need to, like, it's a great country. Like, no, the fuck it's not. You know, and such as. Um, but, you know, she was careful to say that, you know, I'm not telling you not to file. I'm telling you to educate yourself and decide if you're going to be a slave or if you're going to get off the plantation. I also misspoke on the other side of the clip, you guys, because I thought it was in this part that she said it, but actually there was a radio interview that I listened to uh, on her where she mentioned that, you know, all the other stuff she was doing, everything was fine, but the moment it looked like she messing with their money, that's when she suddenly became a target, you see? Because it's like I always tell you, you're not, that's why we've not gone anywhere in this country. That's why you get police shooting us down every week and grand juries just aren't able to find any crime and all the shit because if you're not threatening their life or their money you're not doing anything period Nonviolence is not the fucking way it just shows you're a punk bitch that's it and encourages the aggressor to continue aggressing on you I'm over it oh my god I can't think about it the most nonviolent man Dr. King was watched and hounded by these fucking white devils. It wasn't just one dude. James O'Ray didn't shoot Dr. King. He didn't do it. Damn it, he didn't do it. You see, I don't want to get off into that, but 
a couple things that I really think should have stood out for you. And I don't know if we're going to get to the other two clips, you guys, just because of the file size and the time we've been in right now. I don't know. Damn it, I don't know. Anyway, um, did you hear when she said, if you file, you've waived your Fifth Amendment right? That went by very quickly. You rewind the video, go back and watch it again if you need to. You see, if you file, you waive your Fifth Amendment right. And actually, it starts when you get a damn job and they have you fill out your damn thing for taxes to be taken out. You shouldn't be filling that out. You know, you can go on your own and begin to, uh, I'll just be the spark on this, but you can go and begin to research people that have bucked this whole thing. You know, when we hear about Wesley Snipes going to jail for tax fraud and tax evasion and who else, uh, somebody else, Lauren Hill and all the shit. No, nobody needs to be going to jail at all. They just pick every, somebody every once and again to make an example of. Because don't nobody be need to be paying them at fucking all. At all. Remember, this lady worked for the fucking IRS. She was top of her thing. She was recognized by the highest echelons of the agency and all of it. She also said something I've said to you when I uh, was either in part two or part three or one or two that I said the Federal Reserve is not fucking federal. It's not. There's nothing federal about it. They're about as federal as me or my shoe or a booger out of my nose. Nothing federal about any of that. Either is there anything federal about the Federal Reserve. These are the people that own, own, own this country. And then you have to know something about birth certificates, why it's even called birth certificate and land rights and water. It's, it gets into, I'm telling you, dude, the white man is the devil. That's not just an empty statement. I can back it up with, with hundreds of years of shit that I could sit here until I turn to dust and won't be done itemizing his shit. The only people doing this shit on the earth are them. Nobody else. Nobody else. Only thing they come at us with, well, what about black on black crime? Fuck a black on black crime, bitch. Black on black crime is not a danger to all humanity and a and a sin against God and everything else. They are. They are. Damn it, they are. So, um, I, here's something that I also wanted to take this opportunity to point out with all of this. Because especially when she was talking about, you know, I work for the IRS. And when people start asking me these questions, I just knew I was going to get the money because this and a third. This is an upfront illustration for me to point out to you how you can be part of a conspiracy and not even know it. You can be part of it and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. Don't even know it. I'm sure there are thousands of people who were part of the attacks of 9-11 that was staged by this government and they had no idea because you can be part of something and not know you're part of it. You don't even know. You don't even know. Um, she talked about what I told you about. The 16th Amendment was never ratified. So this whole thing is a fraud. Um, but the $36 million an hour they make in just interest on your black ass, huh? An hour, bitch. Not a quarter, a year, every fiscal, no, an hour. Understand this. I'm over it. But the redistribution of wealth, it's like I was telling you, this don't go towards nothing that you get in the society. I pay my taxes, so bitch, you just a slave. What that mean? Because she, she cited a few the Ronald Reagan thing from 1994. But like I was telling you, 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 they, you think that money is going towards that. And as I told you, that's just going to these big families, people that will never know work in their life. When you watch on CNBC or some shit, you know, billion dollar yachts that have six helicopter pads on it and just all the shit. You're like, who the fuck owns that shit? What do they do? 
You see, what do they do or what don't they do is probably a better question. What else? Um, so it's redistribution of wealth. Yes, the media is in on it. You have to have a security clearance to even be in the media, especially if you're on the news desk and all the bullshit. <clears throat> You know, it, it's it's all it's it's one thing, everybody. And I don't agree with that thing at the end where she's talking about. I'm sitting here arguing about with this man about what your parents, your people did to me, my people, and it's this fence is closed, closing in on us. She got that right, but it needs to be us. We need to be only concerned about us because I'm telling you, they are cat eat cat, and they will step over their dead mother's carcass for their own fucking survival and a coin. We need to be. Only concerned about our damn people, period. Period. Because goddamn it, when a house when a house fire breaks out, even a cat runs and gets her damn kittens. She'll run and get the dog and all the bullshit. She gets her kittens and she goes up out that piece. That's natural. To care about yourself and your own first. Um. Five percent ownership uh, is all that's needed to influence the media. Because it is a business. You see, when you think about owning a business or you think about investing in a business or being a venture capitalist or anything, any of that type of stuff, you know, you, you so 5% of a multi billion dollar anything, 5% is a coin, homie. <laughs> so 5% investment is going to be a lot, though. You see? So, you know, whatever. But. Uh, the media is in on it, damn it. You know, I've seen a lot of media. I've been on TV a few times, but uh, as it relates to just news media, I've been on the news and I've also seen, been on scene when they set up to do a report and I watch. They are other. Even if you see Don Lemon someplace, you'd be very surprised at his whole everything. They are, you could tell it's evil. It's evil. It's evil. And um, I remember, because uh, one of my best friends has timeshare. I still don't understand how that works. But I just know we'd be going everywhere. <laughs> so I've been a lot of places I probably wouldn't have been, but for the, the timeshare. And one year he was saying, um, you know, I never been out to California to San Diego. I think I'd like to just go to San Diego. I was like, okay, let's go. We had a great hotel downtown. We were literally like a rock throw from everything, all the outdoor eateries. Beautiful city. I loved it. But why I mention is because um, some of the nightlife, uh, we were out one night and uh, there was a crew that set up for something. And just how they think they can just take control even of the sidewalks and the area. And, you know, we're doing a shot here. Fuck you, bitch. It's a public sidewalk. You own this bitch and so am I. What does that mean? What? What? Because you got a camera? That means nothing. And I made it my point to fuck up their whole life. I don't think they ever got their shot or whatever the fuck they were doing. I don't even know what they were reporting on. It didn't matter. I just didn't appreciate the fact of privilege, like just that you're somehow better, you know? Because I just come out there with a crew. I'm sure everybody and their mother going to start pulling up and asking me questions. You know, do you have a permit to film here? Are you this and then fuck you. You see? So I don't like that. I don't. I'm dead, Damn it. I'm getting worked up. <laughs> Get, getting worked up. But. Um, and you heard her talk about Ronald Reagan said it in 1994. That income tax. Don't go towards running the country. I'd be lying. Let me receive this. Don't go towards running the country. You know? This is evil. This is evil. And there's I'm, you're never going to get me speaking about evil in nice terms. Or I'm not somebody that bites my tongue and edits myself and all that shit. I don't got time. God damn it. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not guaranteed my next breath. You know what I'm saying? If I croak and die right now, at least I know my last word was the truth. That's all that matters to me. 
that's all. But this is just another insight. And to me, this goes down the, the, a long hole because it justifies everything that I feel about white people. And it's just another thing. And what kills me is how is they as white, hold up y'all. What kills me is how this is their fucking society At some point, either they know they're evil or at some... Because if, if just they turn the tables, just think of all the shit that they do on the earth. Everything. If that was our people, at some point I would say, our people are some bullshit. Like, we, why are we doing this? I would... At the very least, I would come out some kind of way and be like, I that I don't know what to tell y'all. That's not I don't that's not me. And I'm with anybody who wants to strike their ass. You feel me? Like it's just wrong what they're doing. But we don't ever hear that from them. This is normal for them. You see? It's normal. That should frighten you. And then you get on here and you talk about the shit and they have a problem because they're all devils. The order of the day is evil and devilry and strike out the truth. I was reminded of a quote recently that said, uh, there, either there will come a time or something like that when telling the truth is a revolutionary act. It sat me back down again, you know, because that's where we're at. I was thinking even about how, you know, you turn on these talk shows. I don't know who's on now that Oprah's off. <laughs> who's, um, damn, ah, uh, I don't know. I watch The Real. Y'all know those are my girls. So let's say the real, or Ellen, or um, just any of these damn shows, and it could even be some of these morning shows even, where they're highlighting people that have done something good. Subconsciously, the truth is being told to you, whether they, it's their intent or not, I don't know. Maybe it's just seeping through, you know, but there's never a time when a good deed needs to be newsworthy. Th hear this again now. There's never a time when a good deed should be newsworthy. You know, I've seen on talk shows or, or you know, I guess you call them talk shows like Ellen or Oprah or something like that where people get a car. Now we heard that you've been doing something and we wanted to give you a car, you know, and they get $10,000 in the shit. That's nice. Cause one of my main reasons for being on the earth is I always felt like the only reason to have money or fame is to do something for others, not for you. It's not for you to hoard. That's supposed to go to somebody else. You use that now, you see? And I would just be, I would need a show, you know? Let me have money. I'm going and finding people. I will be their angel. I will. I will. I'll be crying harder than them. You know? I dream for that. I dream for that. But, you know, it's good for the people, but it's, what does it say about the society? Where you have to be highlighted because you did something, you know? Nah. That should be the norm. There are no heroes, because everybody's a hero. Everybody has righteousness, is what's abound, you see? But it goes back to the Christian. You're never going to have righteousness because you don't have any incentive. You don't fear God. You've been sold that God is, is, is a man. Depending on how you can work out that confusing bullshit they give you. He's a man, but he's not. But he's his son, but he's his own son at the same time that he's him. And I, I'm over it. But there's no fear, is my point. No fear. No fear. He's my friend, my personal, you know. And it's something I want to say about that personal savior bullshit. Let me make a note of that because I want to try to say that before I end this video. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> there's no fear. <clears throat> so righteousness is not present. Because everybody thinks they're going to heaven. Christians do. Muslims don't. That's why we pray five times a day. And we're begging God all five times a day, you know. And we're submitting to what he has told us to do and not do and all those things. You know. There's a price. There's a price. There's a price. There's a price to pay and God has outlined it. But... Um, you know, this is a society where somebody does something good and they get they get a present and they it, it's the breaking news and all of it. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. You know, but you go back to uh, who was it? Um, those white guys. Um, remember what they called them? It was out there, the cattle, and they was pointing rifles at the fucking FBI and everybody else, and we were like, they didn't even shoot them, but yet Mike Brown is not doing anything, he gets shot and so forth. I forget what they call, who they were called, they had, it was a name. Anyway, <clears throat> they had the right idea though, because when you see something like this, where this whole idea of taking your money from you and making you think that that is the law when it's just outright fucking fraud but then they will villainize the Nigerian who is able to swindle some white bitch out of 50 grand because she believed it on the internet you see but if they can do that then you begin to understand why it is so important for all people that live in this bitch to be armed. You know, if you can't understand it for police shootings and all that kind of thing, then you need to at least expand, if you can expand your thinking even outside of that and go, well, even just this. Because if you can defend yourself, then it don't matter who they send. You see what I'm saying? But it goes back to the whole paperless bullshit I was talking about. Because pretty soon, you ain't paid your shit. They, you, they don't need to come out and audit you or seize your shit. They just shut you off. They just shut you off. It's very, very daunting. It's very daunting. That's why I have my eyes set on Africa. Because I'm sick of white people. I'm sick of America. And I'm sick of its ways. I'm sick of living in a land that where evil is the order of the day. Sick of it. Sick of living where I'm not the majority, you know, no matter what the hell or how the hell I'm received in Africa, it won't be because of my skin color bitches. <laughs> that will be a thing of the past, but I'm encouraged because what we see from the motherland now is we see it all happening all across the continent. There's this push for one Africa to be over uh, depending on others. You see, shout out to uh, my sister who sent me, uh, the, 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 I had already seen it. I follow, cause that's the country I'm moving to is Ghana, homie. But appreciate you sister, um, that sent me the clip of uh, the Ghanaian president. That's my dude, <laughs> all day. That's my dude, you know what I'm saying? With the French president standing there, he's telling him like, fuck you and fuck all y'all bullshit. <laughs> like, we need to do for our own shit. Like, we have the resources. Y'all need us worse than we need you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we need to think, we need to, we need to start thinking Africa, everybody. And anybody that's serious about living an existence as a human being that is authentic, you got to get out of this. You got to get out of this. Because this is the asshole of the devil. And as long as white people exist and breed, their only uh, endeavor is evil and confusion and division, murder, genocide, theft, mayhem, just anything you can think about. You know what I mean? You think about even um, the all the opioids that are used on the earth, 90% of that shit is in this country. You see, don't believe this idea that America is the greatest place to live because it is not. 
It's not. It's not. Just like people that go to Vegas, they think it's the greatest place. You talk to people that live there, eh, they're over it. They're over it. I knew uh, a friend of mine that worked in one of the cages at one of the casinos there. And so I've been out there um, different times. Actually, I know a couple people in Vegas. Let me, let me stop lying. I know a couple people actually over years. But, uh, you know, if you live in America, it, probably at some point you've been to Vegas. But, uh, yeah, people that live, that live there are over it. Like, they're like, this is not the greatest place. It's not. And they start telling you all the reason why it's not. You just go there and see the lights and ooh, and it's Vegas, uh, you know. Nah. So the same thing for this. This is the asshole of Satan. It just is. It just is. It just is. It just is. You know? So, I think I'm going to land this plane here, you guys. That first segment I was surprised by because... I usually break it in segments, at least 30 minute segments, but I thought if I'm doing 30 minute segments, then I should be able to just let it go. I got enough, but, and I did, I just let it go to 45 minutes, surprised it didn't cut off. I ain't gonna push it though. <laughs> anyway, um, I had a couple other videos that I'm just, I don't feel like doing now. You know, I can tell you about it and maybe I might do another, I'll put them in another part. Um, one was just a quick clip from C-SPAN uh, and it was just this two of the people saying that it's voluntary for Americans to pay their tax. It's like a correct, correct congressional hearing. And they say it several times, like it's voluntary, it's voluntary, it's voluntary. You know, thing of it is, is just that, you know, that's why I respect other countries when they're, when they break out in violence against their government, you know, cause they storm shit. Americans just sit around and bitch about it, you know, just bitch about it. Don't do anything. Just bitch. Just bitch. That's it. You know, just bitch. When America, one of their coups, they tried to, they tried to uh, stage in Venezuela and the media footage was cahooting with the white devil here because this is the prov provocateur of any other thing that happens around the earth. Know that. There's not evil people on the earth that are just spontaneously springing up and doing shit. They've been provoked something by this white devil, everybody. You have to know that now. So they had shown some footage to the people that made them think that, that, that Chavez was bad, that he had done something he didn't do, that his people had a, were attacking uh, people well, they went in and removed him from his palace, from his presidential residence. When the media finally ran the footage that showed, nah, it wasn't his people attacking, it was these provocateurs that was out there doing the shit. Don't you know the military that was guarding the new ones snatched their ass up out of there and said, no, we're putting Chavez back in here. I love when it's about the people. Because there's more of us than them. There's more of us than them. There is. There is. You see what I'm saying? But you have puppets in these various uh, places of these institutions that really mean something and be able to keep a grasp on the people. Just like Sherry we, that we just watched. She didn't know she... Then you have those like her that, didn't, that don't know they're part of the conspiracy. You see? You got all these police out there that are holding the secrets of congressmen and mayors and governors and shit. It needs to be the people against them. You understand? They come back and tell us and we get the shit that we, are, that we should have. Just what's right. You see? So everybody works at fucking TurboTax and Jackson Hewitt and h and Block should say, fuck y'all, we're not doing no taxes this year. We're not doing it. We're not doing that. You see? You gotta start holding each other accountable because that's the problem. 
You know, I can't get that far out. I'm concerned about my people. I can't get that far out. I just can't. Damn it. You know? But I can at least paint the picture for you and help you understand the big picture. Why it... Just to show you how much bullshit this is. Wow. You know? Anyways, you guys, I, there's a lot more I could say. I know there is. I'm just not going to... Um, let me know what your thoughts are on this. Um, I think I'm tired because I didn't really eat a lot today. I don't, did I even eat? I don't eat a lot. Anyway. Um, I just heard something. I don't know what that was. Anyways. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys, uh, your feedback on this, and probably some of your feedback can let me know what direction I'm going in next. Um, you can see what a downer this can be, you know, the more you know. And so, I don't know if I need to do the housing stuff, you guys, you know, I just don't. I just don't think I need to do that. It's going to be a very involved... Um, cause this isn't even scratching the surface. There's so much more I could do here because I could give you the whole, there's so much to be said about the, the federal reserve. Um, you need to really go into the history of the 16th, the 16th amendment and all those things, but you can do some of that homework on your own. You know, my people have got to, but you can't just be consumers of knowledge. I always tell you knowledge equals action, everybody. Action. You learn some shit, you go act on it. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to just sit on your ass. Yeah, I heard that too. What the fuck? For what? I've always given you the analogy of, of, the, of the wife who does not know her man is cheating. And there she is at home and she's fixed his favorite meal and she's in the negligee and there she's dancing around and all of it. And then she gets a call from one of her good girlfriends that tells her that girl, he's sleeping with every heifer on the street. You don't even know. Gone is his favorite meal. That shit is in the trash, still boiling. I understand that. Gone is the negligee and all of it and the nighty. She's now got hot grits and hot grease and she is ready. You see, knowledge equals action my people just want to sit on knowledge just sit sit you got to put what you know into action what are you going to do now what you see knowledge equals action everybody talk back to me let me know what you think on this i don't give me love i Duh. I don't know if I'll get this up tonight. <laughs> I might go face down. And I'll, I'll say this lastly in parting, you guys. I like filming in here. Because <laughs> my couch is comfortable. <laughs> and I even feel more co conversive with you, you know. Because I'm, I'm chilling, you know. And, um, so, I'll still film around different places so that you can just have a different, uh, different scenery and stuff like that, whatever. Um, but, this is my favorite. Oh, I could take, that's, the, thanks everybody, this is Jedi, and lay right on over and be done for, to done, till day done anyway yeah i'm starting to yawn and all of it now and my eyes are starting to get watery so i thank you guys all for listening and watching i do look forward to your comments shout out to sister shahada shout out shout out to sister shah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh jazakallah khair to both of you barakallah fikum 
And um, all, to all of my Muslimas and my Muslim brothers and sisters, I send you the greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Y'all need to help me preach. You know, help me. Help your brother. Help your brother. Help your brother. Um, I love you, black people. I'm so honored. When I was telling you earlier about I love being me, I really like me. I love the fact that I'm an African man. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> I love that so much. It's I love that. I love it. 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 I love being an African. I love it. I love it. Do you understand me? I love it so much. I I love it. Oh, what a gift, you know? What a gift. But um Wow, I'm 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 so glad. I wouldn't give it I just thank God. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade tra trade it for anything. It is the best thing in the world to be an African. <laughs> nothing greater. <laughs> There's nothing greater. Um, I love you, and so I always will tell you the truth. I don't make any claim of being the most um, diplomatic man and all those things but what I what I am about is the truth and I tell it how it comes through me that's it I don't care whose feelings I hurt I don't care what piss off I, I can't be concerned about that truth does that you know truth does that and remember I can't be bothered by that because remember I live in a society that rewards good because it's such an aberrant thing like oh somebody did something good quick bring them on the today show and have them on ellen and quick put them you know nah that's backwards that's backwards i wish i would do something i do a lot of good but i do it i do it for the glory of allah because it's the right thing to do and because it's on my heart but if I was ever exposed and people were like, oh, you do so and so, and they wanted to make some big ta da out of me, I would, they would rue the day. Because I would give them an opportunity to put me on camera and I would say, fuck all of y'all. Because this, this shouldn't be something. Because what does it say about the rest of the society that I must stand out? What does that mean? Oh, and I would go in. Oh, oh, they would, they'd be like, you have producers off camera like he's not giving us what we want quick you know because they do that you know they do that they do that anyway i do love you black people africans i told you go back and forth i love you africans everywhere around the world i love you i do and i am your brother no matter where if you're in if you're in Ethiopia watching me, if you're in Iceland watching me, if you're in Greenland, if you're in Germany, if you're in the Philippines, if you're in New York or Chicago or Los Angeles, I don't give a damn where your black ass is, I am your brother. And I, no matter whatever happens on the earth, you can always count on me to tell you the truth because that's the only thing I know to do. That's it. It's like breathing for me. I also want to shout out Diva Queen Lopez. Appreciate you letting me know about the little issue with the thumbs up. The white man is the devil is my answer to you, you know. And um, and if they weren't the devil, they wouldn't have a problem with that. <laughs> Only the fucking hit dog hollers. Do you understand me? So every time, anytime they react to that, they just, okay, so you're the devil and you are. You are. Because if I run into something and go, rapist. Nobody should get upset if they're not a rapist. Only person gonna run out of there is the fucking rapist. <laughs> I'm over it. I love you. Love each other. I'll see you soon. I am the Jedi.